Thank you for joining us in the Hennessy Zone. Straight talk, no chaser. This place was created for those topics that require, well, something a little stronger than just champagne. Over here, we think and drink responsibly. We gotta let them know. The classy drink Hennessy, too. <laughs> Now we don't solve cases over here, but we do give our opinions on them for the people under the stairs. So grab your glass, scoot up, and let's hint and see what's on the docket for today. Now take those glasses and raise them in the air. Let's toast. Today, we celebrate the power of responsible thinking. Here's to making thoughtful choices, considering the impact of our actions, and embracing wisdom in every decision we make. Raise your glasses high to mindful deliberation, conscious living, and the strength that comes from thinking responsibly. Cheers to a brighter, wiser future. Let's toast. So let me start off with this, right? I know we have this situation going on with the black woman whose life was stolen from her by the police, and we're going to cover it, but you'll probably never see me cover a story right when it drops. And I do that for a few reasons. Number two, because everyone is covering the story, especially the larger channels. And what I understand about people is people will support a larger channel with numbers before they support a smaller channel because people want to be where the name and the numbers are. I get it. It's just the way we are. Don't think so? Watch that. People will pour money into people with money, will buy all of their products because they have a name. But let someone with a product equivalent or greater come out and we won't support them until someone with a name stands behind them. It's just how we are, delusional or not. But number one is because I know a lot of my subscribers come from a lot of larger channels and I never want to compete with the channel that I receive subscribers from, especially if it's a channel that I support myself. See, that's the kind of loyal that I am, whether or not I get the same loyalty back. That's just how thick the gratitude in my blood runs. What I have noticed is that I'm starting to get more supporters though. And supporters are different from subscribers. I have over 500 subscribers, but only a few supporters. If all 500 subscribers were supporters, then you would see at least 500 comments or likes or views on my videos. See, subscribers may not come back to your channel, but supporters are going to watch and comment on anything that you post. So I'm noticing that I'm gaining more supporters and I am so appreciative for that. And that doesn't mean they are financially supporting because I don't have that yet. But comments and watches and likes, that support too because that's what grows your channel. And because I understand that some of my supporters come from larger channels, I don't want my supporters to ever feel like they have to choose. My videos are generally going to drop at night unless it's a Fizz Feed Conversations video. And for the most part, those are just news feeds or news breaks that I'm kind of giving information on. But they drop at night so you can chillax, kick your feet up, lay back, and unwind. <laughs> All that being said, we are definitely going to get to the Sonia Massey story. I just have to get my investigation discovery on and look into it a bit and see how I want to approach the story because it's never just about dropping a story for me. So we're definitely going to get into it. Just stay with me. My true supporters know this is more than just a channel. This is a community and I don't care if you're black, white, Puerto Rican, Asian, or in between. This is a safe space for us to come together and have grown discussions and bubbly banter. But negativity is not allowed. So play nice, because I play too. <laughs> but what I want my supporters to do is to let me know in the comments what's a good time for you. Because I want to kind of solidify a time for when I drop my videos. And I'm Central Standard Time. So drop in the comments and let me know. I'm thinking about 10 p.m. Central. But now that we've handled our little station identification break, let's get into it. Sean 
flower. Now, if you watched the last Hennessy Zone, then you know I am very familiar with this case because I was their property manager when this punk did this. We'll get into a little story time at the end, but here's the story on what happened. Hi everybody, Myra Sanchez here with the latest on that infant death. Sean Flowers III died allegedly at the hands of his father, also named Sean Flowers, who got angry, according to a criminal complaint, and drowned the infant in a pond near 76 and Brown Deer Saturday evening. Now there was a gathering of family and community members at that site this afternoon. The memorial is still there. However, domestic violence representatives were there telling people what they need to know, that there is help out there if they're experiencing domestic violence issues. This is the picture of that little boy, three months old, Sean Flowers. Another picture of that baby that was killed, much to the horror of those who watched and tried to stop it Saturday evening. The father, also named Sean Flowers, charged yesterday with homicide in that crime. He's in jail on $1 million of bond. However, today, family members want people to know how much they thank the community, thank the man who jumped in and tried to save that baby but could not, the officers, everyone. And they want people to know that Sean Flowers, that baby, was loved and that they hope the father gets what he has coming to him. We'll have much more on fox6now.com. No Sean Flowers say there is a history of violence and domestic issues with his girlfriend and the mother of his two children. Saturday, a criminal complaint says Flowers grabbed his three-month-old son at a family gathering in the Northridge Lakes area. His sister tried to stop him. The complaint says he punched his sister in the face and waded into the pond, holding young Sean under the water. A witness swam in, trying to grab the baby. The complaint says Flowers told him, quote, Abraham killed his son Isaac. Jesus will forgive me. The complaint says Flowers took the son into deeper water and dropped him into the pond. Police jumped in and found the baby but could not revive him. Many, including relatives, are still in shock. It's kind of heartbreaking because uh, they've been going through a little thing for quite some time that I know of, fights and everything. She was just tired and was breaking up with him. That's as far as I got and he got mad. Grabbed Flowers in the water and swam with him back to shore for an arrest. Police say Flowers told him he would burn in hell for what he So did. now, according to the criminal complaint filed in Milwaukee County Circuit Court, the incident unfolded after Flowers, his girlfriend, and their children arrived at a party to celebrate his late grandmother's birthday. The situation escalated when Flowers' girlfriend performed a dance move that prompted his mother to comment on her dancing skills. She stated something about not knowing she could dance like that and it sparked Flowers' jealousy. Witnesses described Flowers' increasingly agitated behavior as he began packing the baby's belongings before dumping the boy's baby formula in the hallway, grabbing the child from a woman inside the party, and leaving at about 8.30 p.m. A group of people from the party followed Flowers, who punched his sister in the face when she attempted to intervene. As family members begged Flowers to hand over the baby, he entered the water yelling obscenities, treading water with one arm and holding the baby underwater with the other. A neighbor swam after Flowers and grabbed the baby, who by that time was floating. But Flowers wrestled the child away from him and continued further into the water. When police arrived, officers Daniel Stakoviak and Li Zhang removed their gear, entered the water, and began swimming after flowers while officers on shore illuminated the pond with flashlights and kept track of flowers. Two more officers, Joseph Spingola and William Kingston, also entered the pond where, in water approximately nine feet deep, Spingola apprehended flowers and Zhang found the baby. 
Onshore, Zhang and Milwaukee Fire Department paramedics attempted to revive the baby, but the child was pronounced deceased at the scene. And yes, he did say, Abraham killed Isaac, God will forgive me. Dumbass, God provided a ram in the bush for Abraham. See how the devil will set you up and take you further than you want to go and keep you longer than you want to stay. Mm -hmm. On February 3rd, 2017, he was convicted and will serve 38 years in prison plus 12 years extended supervision in the death of his son. Remember, this wasn't just her son, it was their son. Three months old. During the court proceedings, the mother of the baby, Marilyn Brown, played an audio of their daughter crying for her father. Flowers stated, I'm ashamed of myself. I just want to say I'm deeply sorry, said Flowers. Out of all the things you did to me and everything I put up with, you had to take my baby, my only son, said the mother of the victim, Marilyn Brown. Why would would you do that to him to me to my kid I have the memory of holding a deceased child in my hand you can't erase that said Job Griffin a bystander who tried to save the child taking into consideration a history of substance abuse and domestic violence flowers was sentenced to decades behind bars Brown says she won't have closure and can only focus on navigating the future. I'm a strong woman, so I'm going to make it through, Brown said. According to the criminal complaint, Flowers' sister called 911 at 8.42 p.m. on that Saturday in July to report that Flowers was threatening to throw the three-month-old child into the water. When police arrived on scene, they witnessed a large group of citizens at the water's edge yelling, he's drowning the baby. Officers spotted two men in the water. One was a man who was trying to rescue the baby. The other was Flowers. It was about 8.55 p.m. when the complaint indicates Flowers dropped Sean Flowers III into the water. Flowers then swam deeper into the pond. The complaint says Griffin told investigators Flowers stated Abraham killed his son Isaac. Jesus will forgive me as Griffin searched the water for the baby. The investigation into the death of the infant continued with the complaint indicating one officer who jumped into the water was able to locate the body of the child. The boy was immediately brought back to shore where officers began CPR. Milwaukee firefighters arrived on scene a short time later, despite all efforts, the infant was pronounced deceased. Officers continued to monitor flowers in the water. The complaint says he would go under the water and then come back up. He apparently did this approximately five times, but eventually two officers were able to get a hold of flowers, keep him above water, and get him back to shore. The complaint says during this time, Flowers said he's going to burn in hell for killing his son and the police would be blessed for saving him. The complaint indicates Flowers became combative with officers. Once they got him to shore, Flowers had to be tased so the officers could put him in handcuffs. So here's the problem I have with all of this, right? We get all of these ignorant ass little boys with all of their screws loose, missing, or damaged. And we think somehow we have what it takes to change them. We somehow think that little putty got some power in it and can turn an ignorant man sane. Or we think by letting a man pop a baby in us, we can hold on to him. Didn't mama tell us you can't trap him with a baby? This is a myth that has been disproved time and time again. But year after year, we see mothers trying to do it to hold on to a piece of pass around community gutter infected meat. This is why I say sex is a grown folk game. Y'all get a piece of peen and lose your damn minds. Your equilibrium is off. Your hormones out of whack. And now y'all acting a damn fool over these ninjas who's giving the next chick the same pleasure he's giving you. You put up with verbal abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse, other women, other babies, fighting other women, all for a ninja that's off to the next if something more appealing comes along. But he'll run back to you because he knows you'll put up with his shish kebab as long as he piping your fallopian tubes or tonguing you down. We do because we fall in love with the sex penis. 
pipe game, pleasure. We fall in love with the moment and don't want to let the moment go. Y'all get with these individuals who want to control you. Love isn't controlling. Control is obsession. These people don't look at you with loving endearment in their eyes. They see you as a possession. Obsession is deadly. It's dangerous. But see, this generation thinks it's cute when someone tells you, if I can't have you, no one can. Those were run statements when I was growing up. You'll never be anything without me. Well, I'll take never for a thousand, Alex. I would say go to hell, but that's not good enough for you. I want you to go down the stairs and to the left of the base where the fires of hell are formed and find a flaming pitchfork, sit on it, and twitch. Y'all think it's cute when he tells you that he's going to knock your head betwixt the fridge and the stove. When he say, I'll air this itch out. Ooh, girl, he loves me. He's just a little crazy. Until he does it and then everybody saying I never saw this coming sure you did you did but this is the danger of leading with your heart without the benefit of intellect everything you do is based on feelings and emotions and feelings and emotions will set you up every single time every time why do you think the Bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things who can know it because we are constantly giving our heart a job it doesn't quite qualify for. We want our heart to think for us and lead us and guide us. Follow your heart. Just follow your heart, baby. What the heart wants today, it might not desire tomorrow. I love you, but the depth of love that I have for you is going to be based on what I think about you, not what I feel about you. We don't take out the time to vet these individuals. We don't. What do you like? What don't you like? What makes you tick? What makes you smile? How do you react when you're angry? What makes you angry? What can a woman do to turn you off? What can a man do to turn you off? We don't ask questions. We just fall in love. Still in love. That's us. Say you're gonna be. Are you gonna be still in love? That's us. And some falls are harder to get up from. Then we're so addicted to the streets. We want a street ninja. A ninja that's tough, hard, rough inside and out. See, that's what turns us on. We want a dog. And any real dog owner, any real dog lover knows, because I love dogs, pit, staffies, I had two of them. That you don't get a dog to do what you want by control. You get a dog to do what you want with respect because it's still a wild animal and it is stronger. But that doesn't work with a dog that's already damaged. It can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So how much more dangerous do you think it is when you're dealing with an idiot that's damaged and sees you as his possession and you're trying to break that control? Y'all better wake up. I'm so afraid for this younger generation because they don't think. They're so impulsive. I want to live. I want to experience. Well, experience ended a lot of people six feet deep because they wanted to try it for themselves. And it only takes one time for things to go irreparably bad, just like in this situation. There's no such thing as there's no sign. There are always signs. We just be so in love that we fail to see the signs or we ignore them because we don't want to let it go. But there's always signs. We got to start paying attention. That's why I watch so much investigation discovery especially the interrogations because it teaches me to pay attention to people and behavior but like I told you in the beginning I knew this couple I was their property manager I wasn't there when this happened but I saw it on the news and immediately called her to check on her so story time so one day I received this call from Sean and he asked me if I would come by and take a look at something going on in the bathroom. It was my day off. It was a Sunday. I was in church. So I told him I would come by and check it after I got out of church. Well, after church, I grabbed something to eat, changed clothes, and then I went by. They stayed in a four unit building that I was managing. Well, I made it there a little earlier than I said I was going to be there. So I sat in the car eating my food with one of my maintenance staff. Well, he walks up to the car and he started knocking on the window when I rolled it down he started trying to get real slick I mean real slick and hostile oh so you just gonna sit out here and eat so I said first off it's my day off I 
could have just told you to put in a work order and handled it on Monday. I'm doing you a courtesy, so what you will do is be cool. When I'm finished eating my food, I'll be in. So he says, man, fuck you. I'll beat your ass. Press pause. <laughs> I have a serious issue when a man tries to get over on a woman or talk out the side of his neck because he's a man and he feels he has the upper hand. And ever since 9-11, I take threats seriously. And back then, you threatened me. Baby, I'm going to make you do it. Prove to me what you said you said you was going to do. <laughs> that was me about eight years ago when this happened. I've calmed down some. So at this point, he done pissed me off. Because I know you're not talking to me. Can't be. No way in hell. So I got off the car and I asked him, what you say? So he starts getting loud. You sitting in a car eating and you supposed to be looking at my back from ninja i'm supposed to be doing exactly what i'm doing is what i'm thinking but i'm trying to remain cool calm, cool calm and collected because i told you i didn't have any issues with my tenants my tenants loved me but every now and then you get a mere fricker like this one who wants to try you so i politely let him know you already know there's a procedure for getting work done so me coming out on my day off is a favor to you not me so now he's talking about don't worry about it i don't need it no more you not coming in my house oh no because see now you've interrupted my regularly scheduled programming for some bull ish you're going to step out the way fam there's no such thing as i don't need it you better find something to need so we get to his steps and he talking cash shit i mean i'll beat this bitch ass who she thinks she is you ain't all that and by this time i can feel hell rising from the tip of my toe you know i have this thing i do when someone has me fucked up you know how michael myers when he's getting ready to slice and dice someone he does that little head tilt yeah when that head tilt and i get quiet baby i'm thinking penitentiary thoughts <laughs> see i'm a different breed the quieter i get the angrier i am and if i start yelling i'm probably two doors away from the gates of hell being unleashed so i really try to stay calm so i'm standing at the base of these stairs and he's on the stairs just talking and threatening i done told my maintenance man don't you say nothing i got this <laughs> don't you even worry about it he talking about oh you not gonna say nothing when i start throwing these bullets so i'm like you throw bullets i throw blades what we gonna do so my maintenance man told him you better bring all of them out <laughs> now mind you I'm still standing there looking. So I said, bruh, I'm not doing this with you all day. You're doing too much talking. So I'm walking up the stairs. Marilyn comes out. She stands in front of him. Now, mind you, I'm 5'11", about 240. She may be about 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, if not shorter. And you can see from the pictures from the story, she's small in stature. So mind you, I'm not paying any attention to her because my issue right now isn't with you. It's with this practice looking hard ass ninja behind you. So she starts trying to get loud, but still I'm not focusing on her. I'm looking directly at him because now you're playing in my face. I told him, so you're trying to have two against one? Oh, I like when the odds are stacked against me. And I looked at him and told him, so you trying to get your girl ass beat over some shit you caused. And if I have to beat her ass because of you, when I'm finished, I'm fucking you up for putting her in that situation. So he yelling, this my shit. I said, Ninja, this my shit. You just occupying the space in it. And then I looked her directly in her face and told her, move. That was it because I didn't have an issue with her. So I'm not wasting my time arguing and going back and forth with you. My issue is with him. So right now, all I need you to do is get the fuck out of my way. Like, <laughs> that's where I was with it. So she turned around, went back up the stairs and into the house. When she walked in, he walked in and then I walked in. Now, mind you, by this time, my other tenants have come out like, you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm straight church member was riding back they jumped out the car like sis you good yep i'm straight <laughs> so i walk in by myself mind you now she want to start talking all stupid so i took my keys and my phone laid it on the counter and i leaned against the sink folding my arms and i told her you swing i swing what you want to do because i don't do all this talking so you tell mama how you want it 
I canceled my plans to come over here for this shit. For y'all to be over here acting a damn fool because you think my time is your time. So she started trying to say something and I interrupted. I'm not finished. She got quiet. I said he talked to you that way because you let him. But I refuse to be three bitches and two hoes in the same sentence and ain't nobody whooping my ass. So either you're going to swing or you're going to shut the fuck up and show me what the problem is. So she looked at him. He was just standing next to her looking at her. I think the ninja was getting moist because a woman was standing up to him and not just taking it. So my electrician walked through the door and he paused like what the hell did I just walk into <laughs> he said boss you good I said I'm straight so I looked over at them now we good or do we need to see how this plays out so we went into the bathroom they showed me what the problem was I think it was an electrical thing the electrician wrote up the order let me know what parts he needed and how much it would cost I let them know when he would be back to complete the order then the negro apologized and I told him it didn't have to go this way <laughs> you need to watch how you talk to people because some people are with the shit just like you he said he was just frustrated I said I get it but there's a way to handle everything every frustration that won't have you on the verge of getting you and your girl fucked up over nothing i don't do the whole back and forth that temper is going to end you up in a situation you can't get out of he said i get it so then marilyn asked me if i wanted to see the baby and i said yes she brought the baby out and placed him in my arms i just held him and played with him and he smiled just the cutest little baby i probably held and played with him for about 10 minutes i kissed him on the sh on the cheek and i told her how precious he was and to take care of him mind you i'm giving you the shortened version of this situation because this was about an hour ordeal about two weeks later i think this happened i was heartbroken i was furious because in my mind i should have scorpion that ninja when i had the chance just get over here and snatch that ninja's esophagus through his throat i cried and cried for that poor baby i did when i spoke with her after it all happened i asked her if there was anything she needed i knew she was behind on her rent i told her don't worry about it i even went to bat with the owner for her because she just lost her baby i'm not putting her through that trying to get her paid to pay rent and she just lost a whole child and the way she lost her baby had to be messing with her head i think she lost her job due to her being off you know for her mental health because of this but i worked with her until she eventually moved out because she couldn't afford it i even contacted agencies who helped her with her back rent but she just couldn't stay up with the current rent it's one thing to cover a story but it's another to be a part of it because i don't understand the mind of individuals who hurt children i don't there's nothing you can say to me that that will remotely make me understand hurting a child physically mentally or emotionally because they're defenseless we're their defense and if the people who are supposed to be defending them are the ones hurting them what help do they have but i also don't understand women who get with these men who are abusive and controlling and then stay and i know someone is going to say well you know how love is yeah i do know how love is i know enough about how love is to know what it ain't love is patient it's kind it does not envy it does not boast it is not proud it does not dishonor others it is not self-seeking it is not easily angered it keeps no record of wrongs it does not delight in evil and always rejoices in the truth it always protects always trusts always hopes always perseveres. love does not hurt falling for the wrong person is what hurts see we develop a codependency on others and we think it's love we trauma bond with others because we don't take the time to self-assess and heal after a relationship and we think it's love and in the words of tina turner what's love got to do with it when my pain is the cost for your love i'll take single for a thousand alex i'll be single with two dogs a cat and a goldfish before i ever 
have to sit back and wonder when you're going to hurt me again. This is sad, this is sick, and it reflects a lot of the stories that we cover today of women who don't know how to be alone. They don't know how to be all one. So they bounce from here to there, from there to there, from here to there again in an effort to say you have somebody. But who stops to count the cost, the price you'll have to pay just for having somebody? See, those are the things that we don't take out the time to think about. Those are the things that we're going to start back discussing in our Wellness Waves Wednesday when it kicks off on it on next week again. Because this has to stop. And those who know better, do better. So I'm starting to think people aren't doing better because they don't know. And I just refuse to believe that my people just don't know. But the Bible says my people perish for the lack of knowledge. So if you don't know, you better do the research so you can. Because your life may depend on it. Or the life of your children. That's all I have for this one. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this story. The loss of this precious life that didn't have to be taken away. Hit that like and subscribe button so you'll be notified when we jump back into whichever sector we jump into for another show. I use the Hennessy Zone to talk about those topics that really tick me off and get my blood boiling. <laughs> Consider supporting the channel. The Cash App is on the screen. Thank you for all of the support you've shown this channel so far. For everyone who shared, who's liked, who's commented. Thank you. You are everything to me. Please believe it. You're not just another number over here. You're a part of a family, a community that wants to think, do, and be better. As long as you're attacked, baby, we gonna grow and glow together. <laughs> so until next time, Hennessy Zone, Hennessy, Hennadoo, think and drink responsibly and stay true till we meet again. Ta-ta.